Welcome back. One of the more current views in the field of student learning evaluation is the shift from simply testing to a broader process called assessment. While testing always involves quantification or measurement of sampled reading behavior, assessment refers to the process of gathering information about learners' needs, their strengths and weaknesses, their achievements, behaviors and practices, their steady habits and attitudes toward reading. You can see that testing is just one way through which you can assess the reading ability of your students. You cannot measure all those aspects of reading by testing alone. Let us differentiate the two concepts further. In testing, we usually think of finding out what the learners can do after an instructional event. For instance, after reading a story, you test your students on how well they understand it by asking them comprehension questions. That's all that matters. If they get a high score, it means comprehension is high. If they get a low score, it means little or no comprehension has taken place, and that's it. The test very often is only after the product of the reading which is comprehension. We refer to this as product-oriented assessment. Assessment, however, is not limited to knowing the comprehension level of the learners only. We should also be interested in knowing how the learners are able to comprehend the text, if they do, and why not, if they aren't able to. We are after the comprehending process. What strategies do they employ to understand the text? What strategies do they use when comprehension bugs down? Questions like this focus on process and not on product. This is another significant aspect of assessment. Assessment, therefore, should take care of both product and process. Traditional testing, therefore, that focuses on testing comprehension is product-oriented. We shall try both approaches in this lesson. Research in reading has shown that the two most essential components of reading comprehension are vocabulary knowledge and understanding the printed material. Our assessment procedures shall try to focus on these two components. How do we assess vocabulary knowledge and understanding of printed materials using both product and process-oriented techniques? Let us take testing vocabulary knowledge as a product first. The most common way to test vocabulary is by directly asking the students for the meaning of a word, either given in isolation or in a context as it appears in a sentence or in a text. In this case, we can make use of selected response item formats like multiple choice or matching techniques. Let's look at these examples. Choose the meaning of the underlined word in its sentence. Tony's classmates, especially the girls, Avoid being with him because he's such a drag. The distractors are A. A liar B. A show-off C. A boring person D. A serious person Notice that this item uses multiple choice format with four distractors. Notice too that the sentence does not provide enough context clues or semantic use to be able to get the meaning of drag. The distractors cannot also help since they are all negative traits. The item simply expects the learners to give the meaning outright. Here's another example. My brother is such an avid fan of the champion. A. A close relative. B. An efficient coach. C. A good follower. And D. An enthusiastic admirer. You can see that even if the word is used in a sentence, no definite clues are given. 
Here's another example where there are absolutely no clues given. To meddle means to blank. A. Interfere. B. Separate. C. Participate. D. Coordinate. Notice that this item directly asks for the meaning of the word. It's either the students know or don't know. Now, this time, I'd like to show you how this item can be modified to test the student's ability to identify the meaning of the word using semantic cues or context clues. Watch this. Tony's classmates, especially the girls, avoid being with him because he sets a drag. He wouldn't start any conversation nor join in at all. The distractors, a liar, A, B, a show-off, C, a boring person, D, a serious person. What has been added to the stem? Yes, those are semantic cues or context clues. Let's see the other item again. My brother is such an avid fan of the champion that he hangs his big picture right in his bedroom. You can see that the clause that he hangs his picture right in his bedroom provides the clue to understanding the phrase avid fan. This is how we test the vocabulary skill of getting meaning through context clues. This time, let's find out whether students know how to find the meaning of a word using semantic cues. How do we change this item so we can determine what is going on in the minds of the learners? Instead of only asking your students for the meaning of the word, you can ask them to underline the words in the sentence, which help them know the meaning of the word. See how the test directions are modified. Underline the word or words in its sentence that tell you the meaning of the underlined word. The students should underline the last sentence like this. If the tests are to be used again, you may ask the students to copy the context clues instead of underlining them. Here's the other item. My brother is such an avid fan of the champion that he hangs his big picture right in his bedroom. The assessment technique to identify the context clues instead of giving the meaning is more process-oriented than product-oriented. Let's move on to another vocabulary skill. You have seen in a previous episode that structural analysis is another technique by which your students can recognize the meaning of a word. To do this, they should be able to identify the base or root word in a given word. We shall not show you anymore how to ask for the meaning of words. They will just be like any other vocabulary word. What's more interesting is to find out if they can apply structural analysis to recognize the meaning of words or if they know when to apply structural analysis as an effective technique to know the meaning of the word. At the lower levels, part of our vocabulary assessment inventory is knowing whether the learners can identify the base or root word. Test directions can be like this. Underline the base word or root word in each word. One, quickly. Two, wooden. Three, smarter. Four, following. Five, regain. Be sure to give words representing different types and locations of prefixes and suffixes. Another skill to be assessed is just the opposite of the preceding item. This time, the students are asked to underline the prefix or suffix that is added to the word. Watch this. Underline the prefix in its word. One, malnutrition. Two, centimeter. 
three, counterclockwise, four, circumnavigate. Let's have another set. Watch the direction. Underline the suffix in its word. One, crystallize. Two, patroness. Three, planetarium. Four, biologist. Remember to choose the words according to the level of your students. The reading materials you use in class will be a very good source for your words. For higher levels, sometimes part of the reading assessment is knowing the learner's awareness or consciousness of the strategy that they can use to attack a new word. This is part of their self-monitoring skills or what we refer to as metacognitive skills. Here's a possible technique. Aside from simply asking for the meaning of the word, you can ask the students to indicate what they will do to find the meaning of a given word. Of course, this is assuming that instruction on semantic use or structural analysis has already been provided. Look at the directions for this sample. Choose the correct meaning of the underlined word in its sentence. Then write the strategy you use to arrive at the meaning of the word. Write semantic use or structural analysis. A strategy here will not be scored. Just be honest with what you use. Example. Penny has engaged in a number of extracurricular activities. A. Serious B. Challenging C. Additional D. Outside the classroom Strategy Blank Sometimes it is not advisable to score or give points to the strategy used. It is enough that we obtain information on the learner's strategies for instructional monitoring. It's important to know if they can detect and use the semantic use in the sentence or if they are not available to use other strategies like structural analysis. Take note that this is more process-oriented. Up next is assessing comprehension. Don't go away. Thank you.